Okay, hi. I, I've just driven up with a friend of mine uh, from the studios where we were with Alfadi. You saw the live streams, the three live streams that we did two days ago and yesterday, and uh, came back, turned on my computer, and went was looking at some of the videos that others have put up, and I saw this great video that Hatun has put up. God bless her. And so I'm calling this my third gift, or the third gift from Hatun to Yasser Qadi. She has been working overtime trying to glean through all of the many different talks. And this is one of the great things about YouTube. When a someone of Yasser Qadi's stature, who has an awful lot of authority within the Muslim community here in the United States and has been done an awful, doing an awful lot of these teachings. He teaches to an, uh, many Muslims and he says things to them that he is not aware we are going to watch later on. He probably doesn't think it through that if you're going to say something and get recorded, uh, it is open, it becomes public domain. And once it becomes public domain, uh, we can then remind you of what you said. Now, it also safeguards us, because if we quote people and misquote them, uh, then w that we could be litigated against that. So it's important that we do quote them correctly, and that's why Hatun is going and finding these real gems of things that he has said. And so this is a, this is a gift, you might say, from Yasser Qadi to us. So, so look at it, and then I want to unpack it and look at the ramifications of what he's actually saying. Okay, over to her gift to Yasar Qadi. This is the precise definition of shirk. To make a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize then that obviously shirk, which is the opposite of tawheed, must by necessity and by definition be the most evil of all evils. As Jews and Christians are mushrikun in our perspective of tawheed, as we have studied we can understand how. And uh, only the Muslims are upon Tawheed. The first obligation upon every single human being that he bears witness and he testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is because of the same principle of Tawheed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been commanded to do jihad. Jihad is a means and not a goal in and of itself. It is a means to establish Tawheed on the land. I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify La ilaha illallah. So the whole reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and sent the prophets and revealed the books and differentiated us based upon this principle and allowed for jihad is the basis and is the principle of Tawheed. The life and property of a mushrik holds no value in the state of jihad. Notice I said in the state of jihad, not at all times and places. The life and property of a mushrik becomes halal while in a state of jihad. The Prophet ﷺ said, and we quoted the hadith before, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say La ilaha illallah. And when they say La ilaha illallah, he went on, when they say La ilaha illallah, their life and property become protected from me. If they don't say La ilaha illallah, their life and property are halal for the Muslims. If they don't say La ilaha illallah, their life and property are halal for the Muslims. If they don't say La ilaha illallah, their life and property are halal for the Muslims. So the Christians do commit shirk. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. The mushrikun are najis, they are filthy. They are filthy, a spiritual filthiness which can only be purified by the purity of tawheed. Allah calls the mushrikun najis, which is a very evil thing when Allah Himself says the mushrikun are najis. Allah is calling them najas, they are a najasa, a filthy, impure, dirty substance. So you can see what she has done. She has 
taking these lectures, which are for other Muslims, and I, I don't think he intended for people like us and you to see what he is saying here. And he's going through and using scripture and he's using the hadith, which is what he's supposed to do. That's what we all do. We go back for our authority. And he refers to chapter 98, verse 6, uh, which uh, supports very clearly that those who are the mushriks, and he's claiming we're the mushriks, anybody who commits shirk, anybody who elevates another uh, the position of uh, the position of God, that's a mushrik. And so because of the fact that they believe, we don't believe it, but they believe we have elevated Jesus to the person of divinity, that therefore we are mushrik or mushrikun, which would be the plural form, masculine plural. And it's the duty of all believers, that's all Muslims, or all people, I'm sorry, it's a duty of all people that all worship only Allah. That means us as well. I love what Hatun does. After every time that they mention Muhammad, she just puts it, yada yada waza, or waza waza yada, <laughs> instead of going through, instead of using the Arabic that they do to give praise to be unto him, PBUH. Fascinating, because in order to maintain or even to impose or even to create this belief in Allah, Yasakari then goes to chapter 8, verse 39, and says that all that we are there to fight, and that I've used this many years, and that's true, it's in the Quran. Fight those who disbelieve, fight the unbelievers until there is no more unbelief, until all have belief in Allah. So they're to fight us, they're to actually confront us. This is not just persuade them or speak to them or give them the ability to, to reject or accept. No, this is they're to fight us, it's right there in the Quran. And that's why it's so good that Yusuf Qadi is referring to the Quran. And then he goes to Sahih Muslim, a, a, a number 21, book 1, hadith number 30 and 31, that they are to fight us until we testify in Allah. So that supports chapter 8, verse 39. So you have hadith that supports the Quran, showing, and um, you might say, unpacking it and saying specifically how they're to do that. They're to fight us until we give the shahada, until we believe that there is only one God but God. And that our property and our lives are of no value unless we do the shahada. So the life and property of the mushriks, that's us, are halal. That means allowable. Our life is allowable. Our property is allowable during jihad. He kept on saying, well, that's during jihad. Well, that's what that means to strive. Jihad could be going on right now. Jihad is any time when they are striving in the cause of Allah. And that could be done, well, as many Muslims always say, they're in jihad whenever they move or whenever they leave or whenever they come to the West. So immediately, Sahih Muslim, book 37, verse uh, hadith 7 and volume 5, book 37, hadith number 3977. It says, fight until they say the shahada and then they are made safe from us. In other words, they're not safe from us until we say the shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Fascinating. If they do not say it, their life and property are allowable to Muslims. Our life and property. And Hutton put that view of those, at a picture of those Egyptians who are about to have their throat slit. These are all Coptic Christians who were being killed by ISIS a number of years ago. As they were dying, they had Jesus' name on their lips. Now, at the very end then, and this is most telling, and this is why it's important that we understand what Yasser Qadi is all about and why what he is saying affects you people, not just me, not just what happened a week ago when he tried to, when he had a meltdown and really tried to diss myself and David Wood and Dan Brubaker. This has to do with all of us, and this is his viewpoint of what he thinks of who we are. Those of us who are the Mushriks, those of us he is supposed to fight, those of us whose life and property belong to him, if we refuse to say this, and remember, he's just referring back to Scripture. He's not saying it. It's not his own opinion. It's not his own experience. This is what Scripture says. He then goes and he says, the Mushrikin, the Christians and Jews, we are Najazun, and it's, he almost spits it out. We are impure. We are filthy. And he refers to, back to chapter 9, verse 28, which means we have this spiritual filthiness. And right at the end, we are in the jasa, which is the, the, the term that is given to us. We are filthy, we are impure, we are dirty. Those are the three things he ends off with. Folks, that's how, what he thinks of us. That's how he views us. All of us, not just me, not just David Wood. Not just Dan Brubaker, not just Hatun Tosh, not just those of us who are going and confronting him on the internet. All of us who refuse to do the shahada, all of us who refuse to uh, acquiesce and pay the zakat and do the prayers, if we refuse to do those three things, which I refuse to do, 
I will not have anything imposed on me, then they must do jihad against us, and we are nothing more than filthy, impure, and dirty. Thank God we don't say that as Christians. Is there any verse that tells us to fight others who disbelieve as we do, who don't believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Is there any reference anywhere in the Bible that says that we are to go and we are to fight them, destroy them? Is there any verse here that says that those that disbelieve like us or don't believe as we do, that they are dirty and filthy and impure? Nothing, nothing in the scriptures like that. <laughs> Where have I ever said that in almost 40 years of ministry. I would not dare say that because my Lord Jesus never said that. My All the disciples never said that. None of us would dare say that. Take a look and see how different Yasakadi is, the spokesman for Islam here in the United States and in the English-speaking language, quoting scripture and quoting hadith. Look and see what he has to say about you, about you, and what we say about Muslims. We absolutely love the Muslims. We have no reason to call them dirty, filthy, and impure. Why would we? They're just like us. They have the same desire we have. They want to go to the same place we want to go to. They want to be in heaven with God. And the only way they can do that is to follow the example of Jesus Christ, who never, ever trashed anybody, never, ever uh, criticized about people using foul language or dirty language like this or impure language like this. No. Not our Lord Jesus, therefore Jesus didn't do it. What did he say I'm to do? I am to forgive 70 times 7. <laughs> That's great. Oh, what a guy to follow. What a God to follow. What a man to follow. And you can do the same. Okay, I just want to give you this gift from Atu and unpack it a little bit so you understand it. Because this is what we're up against. This is what you're up against. If you have a choice, please, please, please. Remember, Yasakadi has no choice. He has to say that because of what Scripture says uh, in chapter 98, verse 6, in chapter 8, verse 39, also what Sahih Muslim says, and also in chapter 9, verse 28. He has to do that. Come back to Jesus Christ. Come back to his gospel, which is a gospel of peace, which is a gospel for everybody, anywhere, at any time, in any language, and come back to this God who dies for you, not telling you to trash others. Okay? God bless you. This is Jay. Over and out. Thank you.